Hello there, brave souls, and welcome once again to our little corner of the internet where the shadows gather and the chill of the unknown sends shivers down our spines. This is your host, ready to guide you through another haunting journey into the deepest, darkest pockets of Reddit's most unsettling stories. If you're a long-time listener, it's great to have you back. If you're new around here, well, I hope you're ready for the strange, the eerie, and the utterly terrifying. Strap in, light a candle, and prepare to peek beyond the veil of the ordinary into a world where the only predictable thing is the unpredictable. Don't forget, if you find yourself enjoying the journey, consider subscribing to our podcast and becoming a part of our community. Like, comment, and share, every bit of support helps us continue our exploration of the macabre. Now, without any further ado, let's dim the lights and dive headfirst into today's bone-chilling tales from Reddit's hidden archives. Brace yourselves, dear listeners, the night is dark and full of terrors. Welcome to Season 2. I was 10 to 11 years old when this started, my brother was 4 to 5. Like most kids, Kyle too had an imaginary friend. And like most kids with imaginary friends, Kyle had given his a name with distinctive physical features. If I remember correctly, the friend's name was Bosco. Bosco was short, pudgy and had a grey beard. My parents thought it was a bit strange that Kyle's imaginary friend would be an adult man, but they didn't dwell on it too much. Bosco quickly became a part of our daily routine. While getting ready for school, Kyle would insist that I needed to stop hogging the mirror as Bosco had to fix his hair and beard, at breakfast, and lunch and dinner, the chair next to Kyle was to be left unoccupied because that's where Bosco would sit. My parents were just grateful that he didn't ask for an extra platter to be prepared, as Bosco did not eat. He just wanted to sit there to keep Kyle company. Bosco would make his presence felt at school too. Kyle's teacher once called my mom how impressed she was with Kyle's quickly expanding vocabulary. He was learning new words and when asked, he would say his friend Bosco had said them to him. I remember this one instance when a new family moved into our neighborhood. Their kid was Kyle's age. Mom took us over to say hello to them. I remember Kyle shook the other kid's hand and said rather clearly, I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance. The other kid just stared. My mom struggled not to look smug. My dad wasn't all that interested in Kyle's friend, or in anything else his kids did for that matter. So it was mostly my mom and I who got to hear about how nice and fantabulous Bosco was. Then came the incident that made us rethink just how imaginary Bosco really was. One day, Kyle and I were waiting at the bus stop just outside of school for mom to pick us up. This place always had a lot of parents and kids around so it was safe. Suddenly, Kyle began pulling on my arm, telling me he wanted to go to the store across the street and get a candy bar. I told him we could get one when mom got there, but he just wouldn't listen. He pulled on my arm almost frantically and kept saying he needed a candy bar now. I gave in, and walked with him to the store all the while telling him if mom got mad at us, it would be his fault. The moment we had crossed the street, the driver of a bus lost control of the vehicle and mowed down a bunch of people at the bus stop. It was like a scene from a movie. I was in a state of shock while Kyle started crying. When my mom got there, she hugged us for what seemed like an eternity. She knew we could have been among the people who were crushed. Once we had gotten home and had calmed down, she asked me why we had crossed the street. I told her about Kyle wanting a candy bar. She questioned Kyle who told her he didn't really want a candy bar. Bosco did. And he's the one who told Kyle to get me to go to the store with him. My mom turned pale. For some time after that, life went on as usual. Mom now asked Kyle about Bosco quite regularly. But he didn't say anything out of the ordinary, just regular kids stuff. But another surprise for us was right around the corner. My mom's sister, Our Aunt Rita, had just moved to our town. She had landed a job at the same company where Dad worked. And I remember that she and my dad got along very well. One weekend, my mom took us to see our maternal grandparents. Dad said he couldn't come as he had work. Mom seemed disappointed but agreed to take us without him. Nana and Papa too were impressed at how articulate Kyle was becoming. 
and listened with great interest about his new friend Bosco. The next afternoon, we were all sitting in the living room. I was playing with my grandparents' dog, Mom and her parents were talking while Kyle was fiddling with the TV remote. He switched to a channel where the movie Ghost was playing. The famous pottery scene, you know which one, was on. Mom instantly grabbed the remote and changed the channel to Cartoon Network. Kyle was upset. He demanded to know why he couldn't watch the movie. Mom explained to him that he could watch it when he was older and that it wasn't appropriate for kids to watch grown-ups hug each other like that. Kyle argued some more and Mom again told him he wasn't old enough. He pouted and in sheer exasperation asked why it was okay for Dad and Aunt Rita to hug like that in his bed. Mom was taken aback and asked what he was talking about. Kyle told her that Dad and Aunt Rita would get naked and hug in his bed, just like in the movie when we were at school and Mom was at work. Once or twice a week, Dad would come home for a while and he and Aunt Rita would hug in Kyle's bed. And then get dressed and leave. Mom was outraged and asked why he was making up such a disgusting story. Kyle insisted that he didn't make it up. Bosco had told him. Bosco also said that Aunt Rita was hugging Dad right then even as they spoke. Mom's gaze turned cold. She told our grandparents, she was going home. She drove back to our house in a hurry. I deduced that Aunt Rita really was there because Mom came back later that night with more of our stuff and said that we'd be staying with Nana and Papa for a while. My parents were divorced by the end of that year. Alright, my friends, we've reached the end of yet another eerie journey, through the shadows of Reddit's most chilling tales. I sincerely hope you found these stories as riveting and spine-chilling as I did. The world is full of mysteries, isn't it? Remember, if you've enjoyed today's exploration into the unknown, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the podcast with your friends who also love a good scare, it's always more fun to explore the shadows together. A big heartfelt thank you to all of our subscribers, listeners and patrons out there. Your support is invaluable, it keeps the lights on here, and more importantly, keeps us delving into the eerie corners of the internet to bring you the best scary stories out there. If you've encountered any creepy occurrences or have your own chilling stories to share, don't hesitate to reach out to us via subreddit chronicles at gmail.com. We always love hearing from you, and who knows, your story might just feature in one of our future episodes. Until next time, keep your eyes open, your hearts brave, and your lights on. After all, you never know what's lurking in the shadows. This is your host, signing off. Stay safe and keep exploring the unexplored.